Ignition sequence starts. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor and the FinTech hype, IPO hype train is about to leave the station. Just in very good chance that the U.S. passes stablecoin laws this year for the $135.3 billion market. Of course, that's Circle who has announced or, or at least filed for their IPO. They are um, they're not on the link to plat who is one of my sponsors. They're not on their platform now, but I was told that circle and ripple is going to be on there later this week. So pay attention. This, this thing's about to get going just like XRP Las Vegas is check this out. They've got my voice in one of their commercials for XRP Las Vegas.com. You can it's XRP Las Vegas.com. If you want a $25 discount, Go to DAIXRP.com. If you're in my group, you'll get a $25 discount. It's going to be bigger than last year. I can promise you that. Oh, yeah. I think everything into the future will be tokenized. Basic means of being able to allocate uh, ownership of different assets can now be done through a series of tokens or a series of contracts. Anybody that was there last year would tell you it was awesome. This coming year in May 2024 is going to be twice as awesome. Write it down. Yep. I do believe that. Now, um, all the information on this is in the description of this video uh, with links and all. And then uh, if you're in the group, you can get the $25 discount. Check this throw throwback to 2014. That's Susan Athey, who's on Ripple's board. Listen to this little dialogue on payments. And the network effect of people missing out on what, was, what were, were great institutions here based in Silicon Valley there's greed involved too. They want to be part of it now too. Yeah. You can also think though, like if you suppose you were trying to invent a payment system, let's just imagine today you're going to invent a payment system and I'm going to architect it so that if you want to spend money, you have to tell the person everything they would need to know to go out and spend your money on something else. That's a great way to architect a payment system, right? I mean, it's idiotic. And it's the same thing with, you know, sending wire transfers and everything. You know, I'm giving you all the details, my security code and everything, and you could go out and spend it. And of course, merchants don't want that. And, and it's, it's a, just an, kind of an insane way to set up a system. Now, the existing uh, incumbents are also understand that it's insane. They, they got a little few wake up calls in the last few years with Target and so on. And so they're trying to change. But I think if you, if you want to kind of get a sense of, you know, where are we and where do we have to go? Like we, we're we're we've we've got like this whole economy running on just completely ridiculous architecture, and so of course it needs to change to something more. Now, hold on, we've got a few people from the Fed here, so I want you to just you know. And everybody understands. <laughs> no, they get it. This. Everybody understands yeah. this. I mean, yeah. no, nobody wants a system like that. It's just that that's what we've got from decades before, and it's really hard to get everybody to agree, to get all the banks, all the players to agree on change, and so you kind of need you know a little bit of a kick in the butt sometimes. To, and you know the, the security breaches is one kick in the butt, but this this wave of innovation. Yeah. Well, What's Mark Andreessen says is Bitcoin is going to be that thing that's going to that's going to galvanize yeah. people, and, and you know they they may go in other directions, yeah. but they're going to change. Everybody realizes, I think that's that's the collective sense I get from talking to all the different players, the incumbents, the the, the yeah. entrants, is that everyone realizes that we need to modernize the financial system. Yeah. yeah. So, so let's what, Charlie. Interesting stuff. Look at Crypto Bull. I'm still here. My bags are packed since March 2020. XRP is in the last moments before exploding. I'm ignoring all the noise and can't wait to take profits. I've been ignoring all the noise since 2013, Crypto Bull. And I agree with you. This guy says, at what price uh, uh, will you get out? That's different for everyone. For me, it starts to pay 
to get out above $5. I will sell 33% at $5, the next 33% at $8, and the last amount around $10. The digital asset investor will be here long past $10, but I'd say $10 might be a good place to take a little bit off the table for me, for myself. Been here a long time, but not taking much. Metal Lawman reminds us, 22 days after the SEC permitted Coinbase to go public, Gary Gensler te testified, the exchanges trading these crypto assets do not have a regulatory framework either at the SEC or the CFTC. Two years later, the SEC sues Coinbase for failure to come in and register. This ought to be a crime right here. I do think that working with Congress, and I think it's only Congress that could really address it, it'd be good to consider, if, if it was, uh, if, if you would ask my thoughts, to consider whether to bring greater investor protection to the crypto exchanges. And I think if that were to be the case, because right now the, the exchanges trading in these crypto assets do not have a regulatory framework uh, either at the SEC or our sister agency, the Commodity Futures Trading Commission, that could instill greater confidence. Right now, there's not a market regulator around these crypto exchanges, and thus there's really not a protection against fraud or manipulation or a conflict. Okay, then Jeremy Hogan comes in and had a very good tweet thread here. He says, the SEC versus Coinbase big motion to dismiss hearing is Wednesday morning. Metal Lawman will be there live. Motions to dismiss are rarely granted, so I wasn't expecting much. However, I just looked at a prior order on a motion to dismiss uh, uh, from the same judge on a crypto case, and this might be closer than I original th originally thought. Back in August 2023, Coinbase judge dismissed a lawsuit against Uniswap for sale of scam tokens. Admittedly, the decentralized nature of the exchange played a large role, which we don't have in the Coinbase case. But there are a couple of important things Judge stated in order that Coinbase have got to like. First, she calls Ether a crypto commodity. Could that just be a lazy writing? Possibly, but the judge was very aware of the difference between a security commodity, so I doubt it. Second, the judge states that Congress and the courts haven't made a determination whether crypto tokens are securities or commodities. This plays well with Coinbase's argument that the SEC is overstepping its enforcement authority and that Congress must be involved first. Based on this judge's prior dismissal of the Uniswap case, her clear understanding of the technology, her finding of ETH as a commodity, and acknowledgement that Congress should be involved in this process, I'll be very interested to see how this plays out. It's going to be interesting, and so is Stephen Narios coffee with Eleanor Terrett. Today marks a special day, one that many uh, of you have eagerly awaited. Eleanor Terran and I will finally sit down over coffee and delve deep into the hard facts and truths behind my recent endeavors. Stay tuned. Check this out from Mr. Intuitive, who is the official cool guy of the Digital Asset Investor Channel, IMF Managing Director, Kristalina Georgieva. Check it out. Is what we see in crypto. What is the IMS view on crypto in what looks to be a very unique moment for this investable asset? Our view is that um, we have to differentiate between money and assets. When we talk about crypto, we are actually talking about an asset class. It could be backed up and in that sense, more secure, less risky, or it could be not backed up and therefore a riskier investment. But it is not exactly money. It's more like a money man uh, management managed fund. So when we look at money, there we have the uh, uh, central bank digital currencies, and they are indeed a digitalized form of, of money. Is it possible to have the private sector play a role in this area? Yes, of course, private sector has played a role throughout the history of money. But we have to be very careful to inform the public about what exactly in front of them uh, the private sector has uh, placed. Um, I um, uh, like the notion that we can 
we can en enhance the payment systems with private sector participation. Uh, but we have to be careful not to mislead the public that crypto is equivalent in all cases of money. Ah, so as I'm sitting here doing this show, by the way, I'm drinking apple cider vinegar and water, and it like it's kind of like it, your bot. You're like, whoo! Your eyes are wide open, and it kind of wakes you up. <laughs> it's uh, there's a lot of people that say that it's very healthy to drink. A, table, a teaspoon of um, apple cider vinegar and water one time a day. I just started it today. In fact, it was the official cool guy of the Digital Asset Investor channel that told me uh, which kind to get. Um, check this out. Makes a very good point here. To The whole World Economic Forum Davos thing is starting today. Now, here on YouTube, we're not allowed to talk bad about the World Economic Forum, so I won't. In the group, we can we'll talk about it plenty. We'll talk about the, the bad part, but out here, you're not allowed to do that. In this um, world of censorship, the United States of censorship, but in there we can't. Um, good morning to everyone. Thousands of elites will fly to Davos on private jets today to discuss how regular people should stop consuming so much. If this was really about saving the planet, why don't they do the conference over Zoom? <laughs> Looks like Stellar's there. The future is AI. The future, what does that say? I'm, look, I'm trying to read it. The future, does that say human? What a weird advertisement that is. Um, then here's uh, Danielle Dixon from Stellar. Then look, the Coinbase CFO, I'll play you a little bit of this. Everyone was talking about ETFs on Bitcoin last week. It was quite exciting to see it approved, although the SEC said, look, this is not a value judgment, the fact that it's approved. Do you see momentum from this being quite a game changer? Absolutely. This was a landmark day for crypto. This really brings Bitcoin into a much broader investable asset class for trillions of dollars of assets. Previously, RIAs, many wealth managers, pensions couldn't access spot crypto, mm -hmm. and this gives them a vehicle, gives them a very familiar wrapper that they can now access through the traditional securities markets. So we think this is a wonderful step forward, bringing crypto to mainstream and bringing our goal of bringing crypto to a billion people around the world. So Alicia, have you seen an uplift? Have you seen momentum from last week? Have you had extra We've calls? definitely seen dollars flow into the ETFs. What I'm so proud of is the markets have been stable, though. This was a long anticipated transition, and we're starting to see the gradual growth that we expected. What does it mean for hiring, for example? Are you hiring more people? If you look at Coinbase mm -hmm. in the next 12 months, where are you hiring and to what purpose? You know, we have been really happy with our headcount over the last year. We are being incredibly efficient. What we saw last year is we brought our costs down meaningfully, mm -hmm. but our product expansion grew tremendously. We introduced base a layer two blockchain. We grew derivatives mm -hmm. both in the U.S. and outside the U.S. We introduced an international exchange and we launched in many countries around the world. So we are seeing growth and efficiency. Mm -hmm. We're going to be adding headcount in 2024, but it will okay. be all in pursuit of our roadmap. So growing Coin base hiring in 2024. 2024 is going to be an exciting year. By the way, folks, I don't know if I've ever mentioned it on this channel, but when I was in college, I uh, took a trip with some college buddies to Switzerland, and our grand idea was that we were going to uh, drink beer, drink beer all the way through Switzerland at ski resorts. So we we got on the train. It was in winter time. We got on the train and went from ski resort to ski resort. Davos was on the list. We went to Davos, so I did spend one night in Davos. It was not while the elites were there. We were just some college kids drinking beer. Um, I'm going to finish with this uh, before we go into DAIXRP.com. I want to remind everybody, today is Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday. It's a holiday. On I Trust Capital, you're not on holiday. You could go in there and you could, right now, you can buy and sell Bitcoin. If you're in a Bitcoin ETF with BlackRock or any of these people, you cannot. So let's say something really bad happened in the market today. You could go in if you wanted to and you could sell your Bitcoin in your iTrust Capital IRA, who is one of my sponsors. And But you would be locked in your ETF until Monday morning or Tuesday morning, which is tomorrow, you would be locked. You wouldn't be able to sell if you wanted to. How about them apples? And in the description of this video,
there's like a hundred you get like a, I think you get like a hundred dollars for signing up if you click to follow that link to open an iTrust Capital IRA. You also get institutional grade custody. I'm the digital asset and well, let me tell you, in the group we're about to go and we're gonna tell you some of the darker side of the WEF. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, tell your friends and family. Go on into DAIXRP.com and check it out. Here we go.